seeds fall down and wipe out yet. We're going right over there at that corner. <laughs> Hey, Mrs. Nelson, what are we doing on our field trip today? Don't you remember, Billy? We're going to explore prairie wetlands. Do we have everything we need to explore? Well, open your backpacks. Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Water bug nets and jars? Check. All right, waiters? Check. Let's get going. These feel very, very nice out here. Everybody ready? Yeah! Let's go! We need the tonic of wildness to wade sometimes in marshes where the bittern and the meadow hen lurk and hear the booming of the snipe, to smell the whispering sedge where only some wilder and more solitary fowl builds her nest, and the mink crawls with its belly close to the ground. That was quite a hike, huh? Yeah, Mrs. Nelson. I ran as fast as I could. I was the first one Good here. Good job. Listen to all the birds. They're really singing. Look at this wetland. I wonder how it got here. That's a great question, Jake. Let me explain. There was a time when huge sheets of ice covered parts of North Dakota for thousands of years, and they helped create the wetlands that we have here today. As the glaciers retreated northward about 13,000 years ago, they gouged out large rocks and small rocks and lots of soil. The depressions that they left behind filled with water and became the wetlands, or prairie potholes. Because North Dakota has so many wetlands, part of the state is nicknamed the prairie pothole region. The rocks and soil that were deposited nearby became the gently rolling hills that we have in North Dakota today. Not all of North Dakota was glaciated, though. The area south and west of the Missouri River was not covered by the huge sheet of ice. The Prairie Pothole region covers more than just North Dakota. Do you remember the map back at school? It looked like it included part of Minnesota, South Dakota, Montana, Iowa, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Alberta, Canada. I have heard that this region provides very important nesting and breeding habitat for over half of North America's ducks and geese. Can you imagine how many ducks and geese that is? Let's take a closer look at these wonderful wetlands. There are four kinds of wetlands in North Dakota. These wetlands can go from wet to dry in one week, one year, or stay wet for many years. Each has different plants and animals that use them. The first one is called a temporary wetland. Temporary wetlands hold water in the spring for only a couple weeks. Because they're usually small, they are the first wetlands to lose their ice in the spring. They're full of water bugs that provide important food to help birds continue their migration journey north. What's migration journey? Oh, I know. A migration journey is a trip that many birds make from their winter ground to their spring breeding ground. They often fly thousands of miles between their winter and summer homes. Imagine how tired and hungry they must get. Sounds like what my grandma and grandpa do. They stay in North Dakota when the weather is nice and move to Arizona during the cold winter months. Thanks, Jake. That's a great analogy. Temporary wetlands are also very important places for ducks to find their mates. The second kind of wetland is called a seasonal wetland. It holds water for about one month in the spring. They usually go dry in the summer. These wetlands also provide important food in the form of water bugs, seeds, and succulent plants for ducks, geese, swans, egrets, and herons. The third type of wetland that we have in North Dakota is the semi-permanent wetland. These wetlands usually have cattails and tall rushes scattered around the edges and in the middle of the wetland. They usually stay wet all year round, unless we're in a drought. These wetlands are the baby nurseries. Young ducks and geese find lots and lots of water bugs to eat and cattails to hide in. A floating nest or a nest above water is a great place to keep your eggs and young safe from predators. Grebes use floating mats of plant to build their nests. 
Red-winged blackbirds make their nest in the tall cattails. Semi-permanent wetlands are also home to the painted turtles, leopard frogs, and the tiger salamander. Even though the water in these wetlands is frozen in the winter, the tall cattails and rushes provide cover from the howling winds for deer and other animals that stay in North Dakota year round. Deep water marshes are called permanent wetlands. These wetlands are deeper than semi-permanent wetlands and have more open water areas. These wetlands do not go dry unless there are several years of drought. Permanent wetlands are great places for birds to rest as they migrate during the spring and fall. Migration is a long and tiring journey and birds need time and places where they can take a break and rest. Permanent wetlands are deeper bottoms of water and can provide habitat for fish. Walleyes, northern pike, perch, fathead minnows, and crappies are just some of the fish that live in these larger marshes. Wetlands sure are important places for wildlife. You're right, they are, but do you realize that they benefit people too? How so? Well, the wetlands kind of act like a giant sponge. They soak up water from one area, and they help control flooding over here in another area. Wetlands and their plants also help give us cleaner water. They help filter out harmful chemicals and extra soil. Wetlands also provide water that is used by people. The water in the larger wetlands slowly soaks through the ground into a large underground lake called an aquifer. We use the water in the underground aquifer for water for our crops and livestock and drinking water for us. Wetlands are also great places to spend time with your family hunting and fishing or taking really cool pictures. All this exploring has made me hungry. Me too. Well, let's take off our waders, put our tennis shoes on, and have some lunch. Well, you're right. All that exploring does make you hungry. I packed my favorite sandwich, ham and turkey. I packed a lettuce and tomato sandwich. Jake, you're such a herbivore. A what? A herbivore. You know, something that eats plants. And Jess is a carnivore because she eats meat. Me, I'm an omnivore because I eat everything. Hey, I wrote down all the names of animals we saw in the wetlands this morning. There were herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Hey, let's make a wetland food chain. Food chain? How do you do that? First, we start with plants. Okay, how about cattails? There are lots of those in wetlands. Then we find something that eats cattails. Muskrats. A muskrat eats and builds a hut out of cattails. Then we need something that eats muskrats. How about a mink? Yeah, they eat muskrats. They have very sharp teeth and are long and slender to get into muskrat huts. Then what eats a mink? Well, not too much, so we would say that they're on top of the food chain. Oh, I see. Hey, I have a hard one. I'll start with a person. A person? I thought people were at the top of the food chain. We are, but what eats us? A mosquito. Mosquitoes need blood to survive. Then what eats a mosquito? Dragonflies. Dragonflies eat hundreds of mosquitoes. I need more dragonflies by my house. The mosquitoes are awful. What eats a dragonfly? A fish, like a perch, eat dragonflies, especially when they're in their larva form. Then what eats perch? A pelican. Pelicans have large sacs under their beaks to catch and eat fish. You're right, that was a good one. The sad thing is, we now only have half of the wetlands that we once had in North Dakota. Over the years, people have filled the wetlands with rock and soil built structures on top of them, drained the water from them, and more. We really need to take good care of the wetlands that we have left. Yeah, because if the water is polluted, then the fish and other animals get sick and die, and we eat those fish and animals. Not to mention, we need clean water to drink. We need to keep our wetlands safe and clean. That reminds me of the wetland near our school. People have been dumping trash in it for years. We could get our class to go out and clean up all the litter in the wetland. That's a great idea. We need to make sure that people know why it's so important to protect our wetlands. Hey, I could write an article in our local paper, or give a program in our school, or even write a letter to our governor or state leaders. I think I would like to see if our county or town would proclaim a Save Our Wetlands Week. We could have information about wetlands and take people out and show them why we need wetlands. I think those are all great ideas, but for now, we better pack up our stuff and get back in the van so we can get back to school. Thanks for bringing us here, Mrs. Nelson. That was the best field trip ever. I never knew there were so many different kinds of wetlands and that they were so important for wildlife and people. A lot of people don't realize how important the wetlands are until they're gone. 
I'm glad you enjoyed your trip, and I hope you share what you learned with your family when you get home today. Okay, let's pack up and go.